Hello everybody, welcome back. It's Judicious Fire, and I am here with Ashura. Shura is one of those really fun heroes, uh, has uh, massive utility, uh, many different ways that he can impact the game. Uh, I gave him some uh, a modern build. I uh, have been experimenting with him for probably a couple weeks now, trying to find a combination that was both on one side of the skin offensive and on the other side of the skin defensive and how to best utilize him. I want to share my uh, results here today. Hopefully it sparks a light bulb off on you and you think, hey, maybe I can try some of this with Ashura or something along these lines. Um, I think it's important before we begin this video to establish a common vocabulary. Uh, this will just take a moment. I understand that you know many, many Castle Clash players understand this forwards and backwards. Many Castle Clash players are new to the game or get conflicting information when it comes to, you know, what they might read on the forums or etc. When it comes to heroes that deflect or reflect damage, somewhere in their skill, like Ashura, it states that they deflect a percentage of damage or reflect a percentage of damage. When it comes to these heroes, the talent Flame Guard is useless. It will not add it will not increase, it will not buff, it will not help the deflect or reflect that these heroes are creating. You're essentially not running a talent. So flame guard on a hero with deflect and reflect, useless. There is an enchantment called victory lunge. Victory lunge uh, reflects damage. Victory lunge is useless on a hero that reflex or deflex as a result of its skill. So whenever you read that in the skill description, you want to stay away from Flame Guard and you want to stay away from Victory Lunge. Okay, there are heroes in this game that have no reflect, no deflect. Heroes that also have no damage cap. It's a majority of heroes. Something like a Flame Guard is fantastic. It's a great talent will deflect the percentage that is applied to its talent level. If these heroes that I'm speaking of also have a victory lunge, then they do add, they do stack. So Flame Guard and Victory Lunge on their own will add together. You get 50% from uh, uh, Flame Guard, 20% from Victory Lunge, then you're gonna get a 70% deflect of damage. And that's amazing on a hero that doesn't have it already in the skill and doesn't necessarily have a damage cap. Then they're deflecting full damage. So that's really great. There are also ways to use Flame Guard or Victory Lunge with damage capped heroes like Sephirica or Levanica or Dovekeeper. I put three examples on my base. I think it's important to establish this before we jump into our uh, Ashura build video. Okay, here is the, the basic example. This is uh, Michael. Okay, Michael. Michael deflects damage. Deflects 75% of the damage. He does so for six seconds. He has an eight second uh, cooldown. So for six out of every eight seconds, this guy's deflecting 75% of the damage. If I gave him a flame guard, I gave him a flame guard nine insignia. Deflects 50%. It's not gonna add, it's not gonna help his 75% skill deflect. Some people choose to put a flame guard on Michael because for two out of every eight seconds, his deflect isn't working. I use this example because for two seconds, the flame guard is a benefit to Mike. And that's the reason that some people have chosen to do that. So there is a benefit for two seconds. The other six seconds, it's like he's not running an insignia or he's not running in talent. It's like the flame guard doesn't exist. Let's take a look at this example. We'll call this the advanced example. This is a damage capped hero. It's a hero that can only sustain 
in the case of Dovekeeper, where she is full upgrade, she can only sustain 18,000 damage per hit. The Flame Guard, in this case, a 10. Deflex 55% of the damage. It will lower the damage cap on Dove to the tune of 55%. She was getting hit for 18,000 per attack. Now with a Flame Guard 10, she's getting hit for only 8,100 per attack. Huge. So you have just reduced the damage cap on Dove to something that's so small that it deeply and greatly increases her survivability. Flame Guard and Victory Lunge stack with one another. Even on a hero with a damage cap. 7 Victory Lunge. 20%. 20% added to the 55 she went from 18,000 down to only 8,100. Now she's down to 4,500. Now we move on to Ashura and introduce what we've done with Ashura. Ashura has a built-in 50%. 50% deflection of damage. He takes half as much damage as he should have taken from an attack from the enemy. And that half is sent back at the enemy, and they take it. This will not stack or add with Flame Guard. It would be like having no talent at all. It will not stack or add with Victory Lunge. It will give him an attack bonus, but it will not give him extra deflection. I have found that heroes with an innate inborn deflection or re reflection, I found it to be not necessarily what I want to invest in as somebody who builds heroes. I try to pinpoint the one or two things that they do best and then put everything into that. I don't want him to do four or five different things well. I'd rather him do one thing better than anybody. Make him a specialist. That's why we have a hero team. Six different heroes, six specialists. Bring them together. Now they're doing a whole bunch of things better than anybody. So, I have decided not to get invested too much in his deflect. I'm not worried about that. Okay, that's not going to be taking out the super, super high breakthrough Zephs and Doves of today's game. He does not have the ability to be rapid fire enough to take those heroes out. They gotta, you gotta have a really high attack speed. You gotta have multiple sources. You gotta shut down healing, all this kind of stuff. You need a team. I wanna keep him alive. Defensive build. I'm going 10 Sacred Light. Obviously, it's gonna be cutting the deflect that he's able to put out. I'm not worried about that. I wanna keep him alive. I am interested in, number one, the tremendous damage at skill 13 that this guy does to the entire hero team. Six heroes. Now, they have to be near him. It's not global. That's a limitation. And he's not auto-proc. So he actually has to be engaged in attacking. That's also a limitation. But when you put him up in front, especially in player versus player on a small board, Lost Battlefield, Fortress Feud, Labyrinth, he can be extremely effective. It's another thing that he does. Really, really amazing. He reduces enemy energy by 26 every second. So if an enemy has a 100 energy bar, every second it's being reduced by 26%. So that is substantial. You add another energy reducer and you really are shutting down a lot of the energy production of the enemy. Skill activates automatically, lasts throughout the entire battle. So as long as he's alive and going, it's, it's operating and activating. He is completely immune to stun. This is a tremendous dungeon hero. Great dungeon hero to use at really any phase of your dungeon process. He will not have to deal with what makes dungeons so hard. The stun factor. All the way up to like uh, Insane 8. It's the stun factor that really shuts our heroes down. 
uh, fear, that's not as common in Castle Clash. And again, the deflection that we talked about. Now with the uh, Sacred Light, I'm running a 10 Vigorous Fury. And what that's going to do is it's going to boost his health. Huge. Great for the guy. Also pairs very well with the health boost from Sacred Light. Boost his crit rate by 90%. That's whopping. So even though this is the defensive side, I'm getting defensive abilities. While at the same time getting an increased critical rate. Better chance to kill off a hero more quickly. And I look at that as a defensive way as uh, of doing it as well. Uh, and also, that's going to last for longer than the cooldown. So he can effectively, if he keeps hitting and activating, it's going to keep activating and helping him. Uh, I have him with a 7 Holy Conviction. Again, I'm not worried about his deflect. I want him to stay alive. Reducing his damage by 55 pairs up very well with the Sacred Light. Damage reduction, give him a more effective healing process. All accuracy. I am not saying one is better than the other. I'm not saying one is right or wrong. I'm saying for me, it made sense in my mind. He is not an auto proc hero. He's not a global attacker. He's not somebody I'm sitting on a base expecting him to attack the heroes as they come in. Thereby dodge didn't seem fitting for him. He's somebody who I put right up in front in the face of the enemy. Sort of like a hot shot in that sense, or like a Bloody Mary in that sense. I'm not having him patrol the entire board, dropping him right in front of the hero I want him to kill. They need accuracy for that. So there's tremendous things to do with traits in this game. Increase your attack, increase your critical likelihood, increase your crit damage. These are all fantastic, but none of them are useful in any way unless you are making contact with the enemy you have to hit the enemy for any of that stuff to actually happen so i i believe in building a base for hero killers building a base of accuracy give them that then you want to add extra attack and crit and crit damage do that through talents and insignias you get much more of a benefit by using the trait system to provide accuracy and using the talents and insignias to provide attack or crit boost. Now we talked about how deflect does not add or stack on heroes that already have a deflect in the skill description. There is one exception to that, and it's a quirk in this game. I wouldn't call it a bug. I would call it a... Um, a series of events that have produced an effect that is unlikely in Castle Clash and that historically hasn't really happened in this way. Uh, the pet Drogo came out uh, providing a, an attack as well as a 65% uh, damage reflect. Now, Drogo can be used on heroes that have a deflect uh, and Ashura would be one of them. Uh, Phobos would be another. Uh, Commodora is another. Uh, you go through the skill descriptions and it states, you know, reflect or deflect. Drogo can be placed on that hero and it will add 65% to whatever the hero is doing naturally. In the case of Ashura, it's 50%. Drogo is going to give another 65%. That is uh, 115, 115%. Now what that does is it produces zero damage and Ashura goes invulnerable. Ashura goes invulnerable for a brief period of time. This quirk, this alignment of series of events in the game that have produced this result it's no game changer. It, it's no, it's no, uh, you know, secret or anything like that. Um, instead, if you put this on a hero against the maxed heroes of the day, and they're not with a good team, then they're going to get sliced and diced in, in the first couple of seconds. It's not long-term invulnerability. 
you're going to see Ashura taking damage. All of a sudden, there's going to be a couple of zeros up above his head where he goes invulnerable because of this stacking. And then back to taking it damage again. So it's not uh, any kind of you know magic cloak that's going to make a, a tremendous impact. Uh, so, But it is something that can be used. So when you see Drogo on like a Phobos, or you see Drogo on an Ashura, then you, know, you give a little wink and you say, look at this, all right. Uh, so we've got an offensive build. I'm running the uh, Vigorous. Huge crit bonus. I am running the... Uh, where are you, friend? Brute Force. Extra attack, extra crit damage. Uh, and I am running the pet that I have outfitted with crit and crit damage. And we are coming up with Look at these numbers. I'm going to show you these numbers. I'm so, I'm, I, I have such warmth in my heart <laughs> after looking at all of these numbers over the last couple of days. Uh, we are coming in at, you know, 61,000. But the guy does a lot of intense damage to up to six heroes, whole team. Real nice health. Really nice health. Okay, you know, we're at 1.4 basically. Very nice fast attack speed. Very nice fast foot speed. So fast attacker, fast mover. 17,500 accuracy, 6,200 dodge, which is by, by no means, you know, something to, to sneeze at. That's pretty high dodge, even though it's not as focused in any way. Crit of 1707, that's a 170% chance to provide a critical strike in combat. That is before the vigorous fury has been applied. Uh, 1707. Let me switch over to Sacred Light. We're still at 1707. The uh, Talon Vigorous Fury, like a lot of our talents in this game, they don't activate or apply until you're in combat. A lot of health bonuses work that way. They don't activate or apply until you're in combat. Um, look at that crit damage. Holy. It's, it's at the nuclear level. Uh, 20 on the Cyborg Slayer, 20 on the Sophisticated. Uh, those all add up to max skin total of, oh my gosh, almost 4,000 base attack added. Huge accuracy boost, huge dodge boost. 100,000 health, no big deal. Um, but the attack accuracy and dodge are very, very helpful. Uh, really nice. Okay, so we'll give our friend a try here. Uh, we're running an attack build, and the attack build is a 10 Vigorous Fury, as well as a 10 Brute Force. And we have a small uh, healing ability through uh, a pet. I gave him a little bit of dodge with that pet. So he's got really, really high accuracy, relatively high dodge. Tremendous critical likelihood. And just horrific crit damage. And he's going to hit in the millions. Look at that. He just, he, he liquefies people. There was like 3 point something million. 4.1 million. He's taking out pretty much uh, most heroes with one or two hits. 4.7 million. Two point five. Oof. Whole bunch of crits for uh, everywhere from one point five up to three point five. Took out that whole crowd. I'd say that's a win. Uh, so a really great hero, and with his stun immunity, a great hero to use for hit for uh, the dungeons. Okay, we got we got uh, on Nico Peach's uh, base, one of our top might players, one of our top players here on iOS. Uh, any non-damage capped heroes? There's a Walla and all this stuff. We get wrapped up in a Cosmo proc. That's not good. Uh, so we're gonna have some, hopefully, a little bit of healing support from both Serena and Occultist. Uh, this particular Ashura, the way I have him, that like Rudolph or something, he's not gonna have that heal. Do have the green heal from the Warden, but that's every once in a while. 
I'd rather have it be a little bit more uh, often. So uh, we'll see how we do. Sure is up in front leading the charge. He's putting out those big hits. Took out Laz. Took out Walla. He's stuck right now fighting like 65 troops. <laughs> He's fighting a team of 70 troops. Uh, we are now taking on a damage capped hero. Let's see how he does against, did very nicely against uh, Levanica. Stuck against these love doves. That is a limitation. He can be permanently stuck against love doves and we could just sit there. Sit here for the next two minutes. In fact, that's probably what's going to happen. Without an ability to do a global attack and to hit these heroes, you know, from across the board, he's going to be stuck for quite some time against these doves. All right, let's try the uh, the defensive side of Ashura and see what happens. Okay, there's a Levanica. I want to see how he does against Lava. Stuck against these love doves. Got the uh, Ronin up in his face right now. Ronin's having a hard time hitting him. It's not the the strength of our heroes that's going to kill the other heroes. It's the skill of our heroes that will kill the other heroes. Our skills, our skill activations are strong enough to kill the enemy. So in today's game, I wouldn't put too much effort into trying to get these big attack talents. Primarily in most cases, I would try to go defensively. This way your hero can activate its skill again and again and again. And then slowly the enemy team dies. It's because the skill is doing the work. You see we're stuck against this dove. Let's bring up uh, our two buddies. Maybe we can uh, hopefully fight through this dove. You can see the entanglement working from uh, the pet sage, the sage pet. It's these uh, black, almost like thorns or horns that come up out of the ground and grab a hold of, uh, of the heroes. You can see we're taking heroes out. We're doing that at, uh, through a variety of means, uh, through the deflect, uh, through, the, through Serena's uh, attack, uh, and through um, the ability of uh, Ashura to lower energy, stop some of these guys from proccing as often, starts to whittle down and wear down the defenses of the enemy. We're down to just the three damage capped heroes. So this is probably a good place to wrap it up. Uh, Ashura against non damage capped heroes, he can take them out. He can take him out with that crit increase. You can run defensively defensively as he is right now. Man can just sit there all day. Against damage capped heroes, he's going to need a team that can help him. You need some buffers. You need somebody who's able to do you know high attack speed, able to stack up uh, enough hits in combat to take out damage capped heroes. Um... I would recommend a defensive build on Ashura. Don't worry so much about his deflect. Uh, the difficult heroes in this game are still the damage capped heroes. And they're still going to be taking 36,000 damage, 18,000 damage, whatever it may be, 10,000 damage in the case of Lava. Easily be taking that in deflect. Even with 
a hero that has a whole bunch of sacred light and holy conviction. So don't be worried about that at all. Uh, Ashura is a neat hero. Ashura is a hero that reminds us that, uh, you know, there's three or four different things that every hero can do. Maybe best to pinpoint one or two that they do best. Okay, better to do one thing better than anybody than to do several a little bit better than the guy next door. Okay, so try to be the best on the block. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and uh, enjoy your class. Right, bye.